All right, guys, so we got to talk about yet again another story involving Muslims in pride. Uh, if you guys watched my last video, I did a video about Muslims in the U.S., more specifically in Montgomery County, Maryland, uh, protesting against a, a school board policy that does not allow their children to opt out of LGBTQ education in books in school. Okay, and uh, again, it's really a shame because one, that shouldn't be mandated in school, right? We shouldn't be having these books in school at all. But two, they're mandating that the books be in school and then telling parents that, hey, you can't opt out of your kid learning about this stuff, even though it goes directly against their religion, okay? And again, we have another story involving Muslims that is not in the US, is actually in Canada, uh, involving a teacher, a woke teacher that got caught uh, in an audio recording, uh, berating a student who is Muslim for skipping out on Pride Day events at school. And I want to go ahead and play the audio clip for you guys because, again, this is very disturbing that you're seeing teachers berating students in school who are refusing, right? Who refuse to go along with the Pride agenda that is being pushed basically everywhere in the Western world. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and roll the clip. Well, I'll tell you, you were out to lunch. If you think it's access, ex uh, acceptable to not show up because you think that there's some pride activities going on at school, right? Oh, that's fine. You know, because I'm going to show my opinion by hanging out at the mall. But meanwhile, all of those kids who are, you know, involved in, say, the Gay Street Alliance or whatever, I don't even know if we have that anymore in our school, they're here when we did Ramadan for Lion Time. And they're showing respect in the class for your religion, right? For your beliefs. It goes two ways. If you want to be respected for who you are, if you don't want to suffer prejudice for your religion, your uh, color of skin, your whatever, then you better give it back to people who are different from you. That's how it works. It's an exchange. And it isn't like that in all countries. As I told you, in Uganda, Literally, if you, they think you're gay, they will execute you. If you believe that kind of thing, then you don't belong here. Because that is not what Canada believes. We believe in freedom. We believe that people can marry whomever they want. That is in the law. And if you don't think that should be the law, you can't be Canadian. You don't belong here, and I mean it. I really mean it. And it's not a joke, Manzoor. I said back and forth. You want it, you gotta give it. It, I, it just makes me angry. Sorry, I don't really work there. Yeah, so we got to correct some misinformation here, right, that was in that clip before we move forward in reference to Uganda, okay, because this teacher said that literally in Uganda they will execute you for being gay, which is not true according to their new um law on this subject matter uh actually what it does is that it, it punishes people with death for what they call aggravated homosexual acts like for example uh infecting somebody with hiv okay uh knowingly or for example trying to um have sex with children okay aka um grape with children right uh which again to me if, if you think that that is anti-lgbtq um, <laughs> you're saying a whole lot about the LGBTQ movement that I'm not saying, right? I'm not saying that you're saying that I'm just saying, right? Let's make it clear here because again, um, there was some misinformation there, uh, in that clip where that teacher was berating that student who apparently is Muslim, uh, who says, look, I don't want to participate in this, right? I'm actually going to skip school. Uh, <laughs> when you guys are doing these activities, cause it goes against my religion, right? I don't want to take any part in this, right? Uh, so clearly you have people who are Muslim who were not okay with this. So let's, let's read some of the comments here. Uh, this person says, um, uh, fascists and bigoted so-called liberals, uh, they construct a moral framework centered around inclusivity, but if one does not conform to their predefined, uh, standards, they exclude you. Yeah, that's exactly what happens, right? Their diver their version of diversity and inclusion uh, excludes whites, okay, first and foremost, if you're white, you don't count, and you especially don't count if you are a straight white male, okay, if you're a straight white male, 
boy, you will never be included in diversity and inclusion. But also, at the same time, uh, if you are not liberal, if you're not progressive, okay, if you don't go along with the radical left agenda, then you're also not included. And it doesn't matter what your skin color is or your sex or, you know, who you like to sleep with or whether or not you like your genitalia. Um, if you're a so-called minority and you don't agree with the progressive slash liberal agenda, uh, you're not included in diversity, equity, and inclusion anymore, right? That's kind of how it goes, right? <laughs> people are figuring that out the hard way. Uh, why force people to identify with you? Uh, she should be fired immediately. Religion and LGBTQ plus are not uh, one and the same. Parents in Edmonton need to do a huge pushback. Uh, our only hope is divine intervention. Pride is a religion now. Getting your kids out of school is the only move on the board right now. They're basically telling kids to compromise on their religion. Well, they can do the most Canadian thing ever and politely say no, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, again, it, it's funny because these people are supposed to be tolerant. But again, uh, what they do is they actually are intolerant towards anybody who doesn't agree with them. In fact, they went as far as to tell these Muslim students or the Muslim student uh, that, hey, uh, you need to leave the country, right? You ain't Canadian if you don't agree with me, okay? A ain't that hilarious how that works? It, it reminds me of the Joe Biden, you ain't black if you don't agree with me, right? What's the difference between what this teacher just said and some, I don't know, white bigot telling Mexicans, right, to get out of the country, right? Go back to where you came from, right? Go back over there on y'all, right? I'm just saying, there's no difference to me, okay? It's the same thing, except maybe you can argue that <laughs> the white bigot is not actually a bigot if the uh, Mexican is here illegally, right? They're telling somebody, hey, go back to where you came from because they're over here illegally and they're committing crimes and they're agents of chaos. Then, yeah, I think it's justified to tell that person, hey, go back to where you came from, <laughs> right? Or maybe telling somebody to go back to where they came from uh, if, you know, they happen to be a person of color and they talk about how much they hate the country that they're in, that everything is terrible and that, you know, it's the worst place ever and yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, go back to where you came from then. <laughs> Since this country is so bad. I'm just saying, there's certain instances where I think telling people to go back to where they came from is legitimate and rational, right? But in this situation right here, telling a student to go back to where they came from or to leave a country, right, to leave Canada because they don't want to accept pride right um is just i think ridiculous okay i think it's extremely ridiculous but again this is getting a whole lot of pushback here and i want to read about it because i think it's clear and obvious that this teacher should be fired <laughs> effective immediately but again this is canada so let's read here five pillows also shared a letter dated saturday june 3rd 2023 purportedly written by the school principal ed charpentier Quote, many of you may have heard an audio recording of a teacher at London Berry School circulating on social media channels, reads the letter. Quote, I want to emphasize that the views expressed by the teacher do not reflect the values of acceptance, inclusion, and belonging that are so strong at London Berry School. A phone number given at the bottom of the letter leads to the school's central directory. The letter's date suggests that the incident took place sometime last week. Edmonton Public Schools added the following on Tuesday in an email to members of the media, quote, we are aware of the audio recording of a teacher at Londonbury School circulating on social media channels. The school and division are taking steps to address the situation due to the division's uh, legislated privacy obligations. We are not able to provide any further information. While the teacher was clearly out of line, the recording nevertheless uh, reflects a religious tension that's playing across Canada and increasingly uh, elaborate in school pride celebrations. Evidence is starting to mount that Muslim students are opting out in mass from pride-related activities, going as far as to skip school on designated pride days. Wow. Again, that's kind of base, right? Muslims are saying we ain't participating in this at all. We ain't showing up to school, okay, on days where, you know, y'all are celebrating pride, right, which, again, should not be happening in school. We ain't showing up, right? We ain't coming. Uh, London, Ontario, a city where nearly 10% of residents identify as Muslim, 
has been hit by a wave of absences over school days dedicated to LGBTQ visibility. Just last month, nearly one third of students enrolled at London's largest elementary school stayed home as the district commemorated the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. As the National Post, uh, Tristan uh, Hopper uh, reported, a majority of students absent that day appeared to be from Muslim families. At least six other schools in the London area reported higher than usual absences that day. A similar mass absence broke out three months earlier when the elementary school marked Rainbow Day. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so this is clearly a coordinated effort. Okay. It's a coordinated effort that is probably being led by parents. Okay. Parents are probably saying, look, I'm not sending you to school on Pride Day. Right. I don't want you to learn about this stuff. Uh, we're not supporting it. Uh, therefore, you can't go. OK. And that's probably what's happening here. Let's read more. A subsequent public statement from the London Council of Amman's read, quote, when it comes to activities related to, quote, Pride Month, parents play an integral role in the education of their children and are critical to empowering them to remain steadfast on their faith and beliefs. For this reason, the LCI is not in a position to direct parents on whether to choose to have uh, your children to attend or be absent from school. Your statement advised parents to, quote, use their discretion to determine whether to send their children to school on days that included pride related activities and programming. Ding, 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 ding. Which means they're saying, look, <laughs> right, if you're a real Muslim, right, if you really follow in this religion like you're supposed to, then no, right, don't send your kid to school on these days. Again, it's crazy how that works because in Christianity, you know, a, a pastor would probably, you know, a lot of these, you know, preachers are woke. So they follow the rainbow and not the cross, right? Or what's actually in the Bible, anything like that, right? So they probably tell parents that, uh, you know, they're engaged in bigotry if they don't send their kids to school on Pride Days, right? I mean, that's the difference between, you know, modern day uh, Islam, <laughs> modern day Christianity is that like in, in Islam, like their religious leaders, like they have zero tolerance for this type of stuff, okay? So when they tell parents to use their discretion, Right. Along with saying that you should remain steadfast in your faith and beliefs. And basically what they're saying is that, you know how we rock. Right. You know what you need to do if you really about this life. OK. Uh, which is don't send your kid to school. Right. That, that's basically what they're saying without actually really saying it. Right. Again, it's just it's amazing. While pride related absenteeism among Muslim students has been documented most extensively in London area schools, the leaked recording from Edmonton uh, indicates that this issue is beginning to crop up in other Canadian cities with large Muslim populations. Edmonton is home to nearly 100,000 Muslims. Interestingly, the brewing tensions over Muslim students declining to partake in in-class pride activities uh, recall the, quote, reasonable accommodation debates of yesteryear, only with the ideological roles reversed. The same progressives who breathlessly defended the right of Muslim women to don niqabs in voting booths and famously at citizenship ceremonies are now claiming that celebrating Pride Month is a sine qua non of uh, being Canadian. Quote, if you don't believe that, you do not belong here. Again, it's <laughs> exactly what I was saying, right? It's no different than the bigotry that progressives complain about when they see it come from people that they disagree with politically, okay? Or the alleged bigotry, okay? Um, they're doing the exact same thing, right? They're telling people, well, if you don't agree with us, okay, if you don't accept our lifestyle, um, then you don't belong here, then get out of the country, right? Get out, right? That's what they're doing. Uh, even as they publicly condemned the teacher's words, it would be unsurprising if many leaders in uh, Edmonton's ultra progressive school system were quietly nodding their heads in agreement with this statement. Once again, uh, Canada's Muslim community finds itself at the center of an ideologically charged debate over Canadian values. This time around, the absolutists are wearing uh, rainbow colored clothing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They're coming. They're becoming exactly what they claim they're against. And again, this is a fascinating story, right? In regards to what's happening here, because again, the solution is really to pull kids out of schools because these schools uh, are being run by the left. They've been overtaken by ultra woke, <laughs> ultra progressive uh, politicians and ideologues and activists. And, you know, the reality is that at this point, it, it sucks that we may be headed back towards segregation, right? We're segregating kids in school, right? Except this time it's not about race. It's about 
uh, segregating kids based off whether or not parents want them exposed to woke indoctrination. It's really sad because in a sane society, we should all agree that this stuff should not be taught in schools. Kids have no business learning about uh, sexuality and gender ideology in schools outside of actual science, like real science and biology. The same way, again, you know, at least in America, we agreed that, hey, you know, uh, we shouldn't be in school, you know, trying to make kids Muslim or Christian or trying to indoctrinate them in a religion. Right. It's just amazing how this works. OK, again, these progressives have become everything that they claim that they were against is it's went full circle on a variety of issues, not just this issue, but also on the issue of race. OK, they want to segregate people based off race as well, too. It's amazing. Right. It's absolutely amazing. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.